And now we move on to the next match, which we had in this group between Japan going up and hosting Australia, the Socceroos, in a game that in my last video I previewed would be Japan's biggest challenge yet in this tournament and ultimately it showed man with a 1-1 draw in Japan not being able to score a natural organic goal but having a goal scored via an own goal in Australia as well also scoring an own goal or Japan I don't know the wording's weird there but both teams <laughs> yeah. scoring own goals in this match to ultimately end in a draw Australia had their men behind and just ultimately didn't allow Japan to go off the way we've seen them in those first three games yeah, and, and, and that's why I'm disappointed in Japan because the first three games, I thought Japan were back. You know, we were saying, okay, this is return to form for Japan as being not just one of the best teams in Asia, but possibly one of the more hotter teams in all of world football. But then after a game like this at home against, yes, a very sturdy Australia, I was still expecting three points for Japan. And what, what we got was a Japan that could not figure out how to beat this Australian side. And it was actually, I thought a really poor performance overall from Japan and it was so poor that it reminded me of their form in the Asian Cup mm -hmm. this is this was an appearance from AFC Asian Cup Japan this wasn't top form Japan and it's scary that that version still exists yeah. within this side it's very concerning that Japanese team was very prone for mistakes at the back Itakura was you know had a really bad semi-final there was a really bad own goal today like a really bad one the one that Japan forced I can understand a little unlucky for Australia, but the one that Japan got conceded against them should not happen. You got to clear that one. It's not even close to being a dangerous cross. It should never end in an own goal. It's a terrible clearance, or terrible clearance that leads to a goal. Really poor defending for Japan. And then offensively, we saw Japan in the AFC Asian Cup be kind of lacking creativity. Saw that today. Mm -hmm. And we saw a Japanese side in the AFC Asian Cup that was one dimensional. You know, Japan at their best has multiple facets of attack. But today, they just kept trying the same thing over and over again. But every single time, time it was met with Australian aggression. Japan could not get a clean shot on target the entire 90 minutes. At a certain point, you got to start trying different things. Japan really didn't do that. And Australia, for me, got a comfortable draw today. Like, yes, Japan had a lot of the ball and Australia have nothing to offer offensively. Do not get me wrong, but Japan did not give much offensively either. So this is a very fair result. This game should have ended in a draw. I think it's disappointment though, because Japan were at home. It's disappointment. This is, this is the toughest tests they're gonna have in my opinion so like what else are we gonna see they're gonna dominate these other small yeah. teams but in the back of my mind like you mentioned I'm always gonna be thinking what's gonna happen when they face a team that bunkers in and can bunker in well defensively like Australia did today and maybe you know in the World Cup you're gonna be facing teams that are like that but then also offer much more beyond one total shot like Australia yeah. offer actual offense so that's what concerns me for Japan I completely agree for Australia, what are your thoughts on the Popovich regime so far <laughs> with the 3-1 victory over China and then getting a point against Japan away from home has to be ultimately considered a victory. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a start for Popovich. Like, good Lord. <laughs> he couldn't have asked for a better start. Yeah, he almost say. won. Yeah. He almost won this game in Japan, which would have been nuts. Problem is, is I... <sighs> I will say Popovich has called up more players, which I think is good just for a competitive standpoint within the squad itself. But man, we've said it for the last year, I'd say, Australia have no offense. They just don't have any player that can take on opponents one-on-one. -on -one. They don't have a creative midfield. One thing that they do have, whether Popovich is in or not, is defensive commitment. That has never been gone from this Australian side. It was here today on full display. Honestly, a defensive masterclass outside of that own goal. Truly, Damn. they were so close to putting off a perfect defensive performance because they truly did shut down Japan. Like this wasn't Japan having 80% possession and 20 shots on goal. It was not that. They had 80% possession, but I think Australia reduced them to only six shots on goal. So that much of the ball and that little shots on target, I think that shows you how good defensively Australia were. So I don't know if I want to give it to Popovich, honestly. I just think it's that classic grit that we always talk about when it comes to Australia. Yeah, I, I agree with with that and for Japan it's, it's just annoying because now I'm just gonna have to wait for the next Australia game yeah and I'm gonna need them to kill Australia <laughs> right to get yeah. my confidence back in them that's yeah. what it's gonna take I don't care how much they how crazy they go off in these next few games when they face off against Australia I need to see them go back to their old selves that we've been seeing these past few weeks so